as future unfolds. So we can all dream about what can be a better future. Okay, so dream, but an informed dream, because we started from uh, from data. This conversation started actually from uh, from mental models, and I think uh, Elena will help me to get through the models, as it looks like it uh, it happens uh, that w this conversation um, that started from models started with this question for us. What are some models on leaders and on organizations that we see now emerging that are from the present and more from the future than from the past? So, and we started by looking uh, to what is shaping currently leaders and organizations. And besides COVID-19, uh, that is clearly shaping leaders and organizations, what else is shaping leaders and organizations? And we started to look a little bit back, like in the last 10 years, to see if something started to shift at some point from, uh, from the models of leadership on organizations that we, we already knew, and see if we can see some patterns. And for that, we uh, started to look at uh, data, research, books, and uh, playlists like top 10 uh, bestseller leadership books on Amazon or top 10 um, TED Talks. What are we currently learning about leadership? What seems to be uh, something that we are uh, learning about leadership in this moment? And maybe it started five or 10 years ago, but it's currently being shaped by what has happened. And what we did today, in, or at least what we're gonna do in the first part of this conversation, is to present you with some, uh, some uh, patterns that we've seen across models so that we can have a conversation about this future that none of us already knows, but it, the future always comes into uh, patterns and the small, uh, small metaphors that are across different uh, types of, uh, of models. And the first one is um, Future Leader, uh, which is a book recently published. Um, and uh, these are six um, trends that are shaping the future of leadership now. And I'm sure you've heard some of them yesterday and today, and you're going to hear about some of them in the following days. Artificial intelligence, technology, the pace of change, the new talent landscape, the purpose and the meaning morality, ethics, and transparency, and globalization. So besides COVID, which is some, somewhere maybe number seven or maybe zero in this, uh, in this uh, uh, list of trends, this is uh, what looks like is shaping leadership models and organizational models now. And let's look at some of the findings because uh, the book was done in the shape of the new organizational um, models. It included findings uh, over a 14,000 person LinkedIn member survey conducted over a year in partnership with, uh, with Jacob Morgan. And these are some highlights from the, from the book. Uh, it looks like leadership of the future. It's a leadership that prioritizes people, purpose and agility and also needs to be inspiring and uh, emotionally intelligent and uh, very good listening and communication skills. Although this is an aspiration to have these skills, um, over 50% of the people responding to the surveys said that their leaders are currently practicing this skill not at their best performance. So, um, this is getting more complex <laughs> and I also added some uh, small explanation of what, uh, of some, uh, what some of these trends means. mean. Um, the research highlighted nine patterns, things that are repeating uh, across conversations and interviews with respondents. And this is four sets of mindsets and five skills. Uh, some of the skills are uh, more self-explanatory, like coach or futurist or technology uh, teenager, 
what got my attention is a uh, translator. The leader of the future is a translator. It has a very good listening skills. He, lis he or she listens to understand and after that to communicate. And also the, um, uh, the funny one, let's say Yoda, <laughs> Uh, which is a, a metaphor about a person that is in the same time emotionally intelligent, has empathy, has self-awareness, can build connection, and isn't afraid to be vulnerable. And some of the mindsets behind these skills are the leader of the future is a global citizen, uh, the leader of the future is a servant, practices humility and serving. Uh, a good metaphor is a chef more of an artist that blends these two essential ingredients, humanity and technology. And also an explorer has this, uh, this mindset of embra embracing the unknown and learn continually and practice curiosity. Thank you. Another one from 2020 is uh, this um, study of a future of leadership report of MIT Sloan, when it, where it's interesting that they've uh, mapped some of the skills of leadership that are no longer needed or used, some that are still important and enduring, and some that are emerging. And across enduring, we'll find the ones that you probably uh, already knew, a leader needs a vision, needs to focus on performance, to maintain a profit orientation and um, customer-centric and leads by example. But more interesting is the emerging set of skills and behavior for leaders. Because some of the, the, the words in the previous uh, study and book are the same. It's purpose-driven, nurtures passion, makes data-driven decisions. It includes authenticity, empathy, inclusive approach, humility, and works across boundaries. But this is not new or not that new. Uh, first, uh, one of the first books that started to talk about this new kind of leadership is La Luz Reinventing Organizations, which is five or six years old. And his uh, assumption was that we're at the, at the moment in the um, um, in the evolution of humanity, where we as humanity are evolving and society and the economy and organizations are just uh, shapes that follow this evolution. So organizations are in a moment where they need to evolve and we are in a transition in leadership and organization. And for this, he mapped different types of organizations and uh, this is for him the, um, and his research, the, the organization of the future, that it's called TIL organizations, because all the organization in, in the book and research are called with the color numbers. And it's really interesting that he chose this color that you, you'll see a lot in, in other researches and also in this, uh, in this event. And these are the three main characteristics of the, the organization of the future. Self-management, that uh, means uh, the organization operates effectively, even at large scale, uh, without controlling, allowing people spaces and structures that, um, that give people autonomy. Wholeness, which is a word um, that can mean a lot of things, but the, the, the metaphor for this word is that these organizations and structures provide a frame for people to come at, the, at work or in the organization with their whole persona, not with their professional side. And uh, I think we're going to listen less and less in the future years about the work work life balance, because there's only uh, life that includes work and work that includes life. <laughs> and evolutionary purpose. Um, which means agile, which means uh, we switch from machinery uh, of, of plans and budgets and the incentives. But paradoxically, in the same time, this organization can be profitable and generate financial results and have this uh, less control and, uh, and machinery 
more humanity and autonomy and wholeness, but in the same time, it's not about contribution or being an NGO. If their purpose is to be an NGO, it's okay. But otherwise, if it's a business organization, then profit is all, always uh, all, also there, but connected with an evolutionary purpose. And this is a selection of three books from the last uh, three years. Well, two of them uh, are even from uh, from the last year uh, that are unlikely in uh, are bringing some unlikely words and metaphors in leadership. Collaborating with the enemy is a book by a um, um, peace negotiator and conflict facilitator, a person that really works in, in, uh, in structures and conversations that are very difficult. And one of the things this book says that is that we need to learn to work with discord, experimentation and genuine co-creation. The second one, the team of teams, is wrote by a general. <laughs> And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, a book about uh, leaders looking to make their teams more adaptable, more agile and unified in the midst of change. The third one um, published by Ashoka about the future of work is um, a book about how can we, uh, we lead teams and organizations to self-management. And it's uh, surprisingly to see such different uh, leaders working with uh, politics and with armies and with social entrepreneurs, uh, bringing in the space of the future of leadership, the same words. Uh, and also to the, so the recent studies about skills, um, some of the emergent skills of, um, uh, to solve, of the next five years, in the um, uh, in this study says that we are we're gonna focus on self-management such as active learning resilience stress tolerance and flexibility there are many many other studies we've only uh, picked some of them that we thought uh, are relevant and uh, also new and i think the next one is a uh, is a more of a longer study a seven-year study on brave leadership Brenna Brown and her measuring stick um, had a lot of conversations and uh, interviews about leadership and the findings of the books is that we're going to practice leadership with these four skills. Vulnerability, living into our values, trust and learning to rise. And also two metaphors from the, this study that who we are is how we lead and that courage is contagious and courage is a word that has uh, has been a lot used in recent years in leadership and, and organizations. And it's a different kind uh, type of courage. It's not the courage, uh, the uh, army style type of courage. It's a courage embedded with vulnerability and trust and authenticity. And I have to, to say my, my favorite one. <laughs> um, uh, Theory U is based on 20 years of action research by MIT and Presencing Institute. And uh, within this process, the theory about leading from the future as it emerges has, uh, has changed, but its core, it's the same. That we, um, we are today in a moment when we need to, to fundamentally change leadership because we are now in a moment where we have some, uh, some challenges that we've never seen before. And they've summarized these challenges in, into a phrase and into um, three divides. Um, the phrase is the phrase that Otto Scharmer, the author, uh, always begins the, uh, a lot of the processes with. We collectively produce results nobody wants. Somehow, on the planet, we can see a lot of results of our work that we do not like. And nobody did that, but we all somehow did that. And nobody can solve that, but we all have to solve that. 
And uh, this means the ecological divide, uh, the separation be between us and nature and the damage that we're doing by consuming more than 1.5 planets a year. This includes the social divides, the, the, the separation of us versus them, whoever us or them is, that we hear in a lot of polarized conversation all around the world, sectors, politics, business. And the separation between um, our, ourselves and our calling, our purpose. And if we were to work uh, together uh, and practice some skills, the three skills that um, they have constantly uh, found in, our, in their research and practiced with groups are curiosity, which means having an open mind and really, really listen to understand um, and suspend our voice of judgment, compassion and empathy and vulnerability, which means having an open heart and courage acting with an open will and, um, and acting fearlessly and more courageously together. And this could bring us to shaping new types of organizations, structures, infrastructure, systems. Uh, three main categories being new learning infrastructures that connect the head, the heart and the hand, uh, not only the, the head and, and models. Uh, new democratic infrastructures that invite people to have dialogue, that are di in direct con connection with their uh, constituency and the communities that, that they serve, that are distrib distributed, and new economic infrastructures that move from ego to eco. So this is somehow the, the one of the metaphors of this going through um, through models is that organizations of the future uh, look like they are more like ecosystems and that leaders are more people that design and shape these ecosystems rather than commanders of these systems. And it's very interesting that yesterday uh, in this event, um, I heard Zahir uh, in the conversation about the cities, saying almost the same thing about designing cities of tomorrow, that will design platforms across the ecosystem to better serve the cities of tomorrow. And um, even at the end, uh, there was one metaphor about the buildings of the future that will um, have this ability to rearrange themselves. So somehow the buildings of the future are not fixed structures anymore. And this is kind of the same thing that looks like it's happening in organizations. Organizations of the future are not fixed. They will constantly rearrange themselves as ecosystems to uh, better serve their communities and purpose and um, mission. And here is the um, end of the mental part of our conversation. And I wanted to, to end it with some thoughts from Irina. She, uh, she harvested them from all our conversations in the last uh, weeks into a small uh, phrase or poem, as you want to call it. We live in a time with no time, when a crisis keeps up too much in the now, and while this grounds us and is healing and is being particularly helpful, allowing ourselves to dream is of utmost importance. And uh, with uh, with this uh, bridge from from the mental download, hopefully by now you feel your head flooded with uh, with new ideas. Um, we also wanted to take the pulse of uh, of how these uh, models are are being lived by the people around us. So we started um, many conversations around this topic um, in this attempt to to feel what the uh, leadership of the future looks like for the people around us. And um, we started to do that by asking a couple of questions. Um, we asked what kind of leaders and organizations do our children need? Uh, we also wanted to know what do leaders and organizations need to let go of, what is no longer needed? 
what are some seeds of the future for leadership and organizations? What is emerging? And also in 2021, what should be the number one priority of the agenda of leaders on the agenda of leaders and organizations worldwide? Um, it has been a very interesting process, uh, not just the harvesting of these ideas, but um, observing the flow of the conversations and um, like, uh, how, how could I put it? The meta process of, uh, of uh, all, this, um, all this journey uh, that we will talk about uh, more in a second. But <clears throat> for now, I wanna share some of the snippets uh, that we put together from these conversations. Um, I'm going to start with um, a couple of ideas uh, coming from uh, Alain Cardon, a master certified coach. Expectation. Nation, 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 nation. That I am hearing with an echo. Disappear, appear, 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 appear. I have a feeling I might have to tell you myself what he said. <laughs> okay, so there's there's an idea from the tech crowd that somebody in the call, so either it's you or uh, Diana or Nina, should stop their microphone because it captures the sound from this uh, as well. So the best way is to close off your sound um, and then we can give it a go. Your mic, right? So let's stop. If, if, if Diana or Elena or Irina have their microphones turned on, this is a good time to turn them off. So if you have turned off your microphones, then we can uh, give it a go again. I don't need to film me, thank you very much. Uh, give it again uh, a go for the video, thank you. Uh, younger uh, people, 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 minors in a way, uh, in, in the sense of lesser beings. Much more, much more, much more. I would say a better reparation, a better reparation, lives to treat them like equals. Uh, because they will need to work with other people as partners much more than subordinates. Hmm. Uh, will need so to let's uh, practice also what we've learned from uh, uh, working with the organizations of the future. And probably and this means like that uh, uh, Elena could summarize for us because this is a snippet from a 30 minutes conversation with Diana. Elena. Hello, Diana. Yes, so uh, actually, uh, it was a very short snippet. So. Um, the, the moment that I chose to share with you uh, was his answer to the question about uh, what do our children need from the, the leaders and the organizations of the future. And he made a very interesting point about how our children need to be treated as equal, equals from a very early stage, because um, this is the best training in creating flatter organizations of the future, which is obviously the trend. Um, basically, uh, our children um, need to, to be uh, led out of this uh, vertical, hierarchical, top-down type of approach, and uh, they need to start experiencing partnerships very early on uh, in the conversations they have with their uh, parents because then they will not have the need to compensate uh, this lack of uh, or uh, an equilibrium um, vertical uh, missing of equilibrium um, when they grow up and they will have to uh, uh, reinforce that vertical uh, way of interacting in order to compensate the relationship they have with their parents um, and I found that was a very interesting uh, systemic approach uh, in uh, in how um, we could we, we could look at preparing our children for the organizations of the future. Um, I'm also going to move uh, forward with the presentation uh, with a couple of hashtags uh, that we um, got out of um, 
the people we talk to, uh, what kind of leaders and organizations do our children need? They say uh, they need leaders who know how to serve, that are driven by their purpose, that are ethical and agile and quickly adapt to change an environment fit to grow women leaders as well as men, uh, a compassionate environment, courageous leaders who take time to listen and focus more on collective well-being. Um, we also have um, a couple of hashtags for our second question. What do leaders and organizations need to let go of? What is no longer needed? Um, apparently, we need to let go on focusing on market share and profits only. Command and control structures are have been showing um, as a as a, a very often um, point of focus. Uh, pyramid uh, pyramid structures also have to go. Um, silo structures, control and fear. For our third question, what are some seeds of the future for leadership and organizations? What is emerging? Um, our uh, the answers we got uh, stem from more collaboration trust uh, partners serving empathy possibility agile methodology collaborating for impact vulnerability partnerships and equality awareness about our impact on future generations um, And in terms of what should be the number one priority on the agenda of leaders and organizations worldwide in 2021, um, we have be comfortable with, uh, be comfortable that people bring their full selves to work, dream, prototype, fail, and learn from it, and act with courage. Um, we all have another video. I'm not sure if uh, it will work this time and organizations. The emerging trends that I'm focusing on and I see growing um, as we try to shift the dynamic towards a more just and sustainable world. So let's world, take this uh, couple of minutes hand, until the team finds the video on uh, email and can present it because it's, it's really yeah. important yeah. that they hear uh, this from uh, Gabriela. Yeah. I will need, Diana, can you hear me? Uh, and, position and of leadership where she can Diana. see uh, this change is already happening in organizations across the globe but she also in her uh, movie is saying Diana, a lot of the things us? from the studies Hello, and from Diana. the other conversation without us telling her that th these were the Diana. results of our conversations and, uh, and research Diana can you hear us Yes. So this video and the previous video work. The problem is that you are not hearing them. So I would like the video team to put the video again. We can hear it perfectly everywhere. It's just there's a problem with your uh, settings probably. So let's uh, play the video from uh, Gabriela Gandel. Thank you. Thank you. Hello everybody, it is a pleasure to be with you here today, even if virtually, and share some reflections on leadership and organizations. The emerging trends that I'm focusing on and I see growing um, as we try to shift the dynamic towards a more just and sustainable world are three. On the one hand, I see a need for organizations and leaders that are more representative and truly embedded in the communities that they actually serve. Leaders that uh, not only look uh, feel and lead like the communities they serve, but also leaders that create organizational forms that empower and uplift their communities, not only extract value. Um, hence, looking at more collaborative, more co-owned structures that truly become a commons asset for the communities in which these organizations, be them for-profit or not-for-profit or public, operate. I also see leaders that instead of getting strong at uh, presentation skills and awareness and business acumen and innovation processes, which are pretty much the classic skills that we've been promoting for quite some time here, is that we need actually leaders that are fantastic at collaboration. And when I mean that, I don't just mean collaboration when we have a common goal and common values and it's easy. 
I mean collaboration when it's difficult, collaboration when we need to bring bridges, collaboration when we need to address uh, bias and uh, discrimination, collaboration when we need to address very different needs and agendas between multiple types of stakeholders, collaboration that truly builds sustainable teams uh, behind leaders and not just individual uh, personalities. And why we need that is because in order for all of us to get to a more just and sustainable world, we need to have those leaders that bring people together, particularly now in this highly fragmented world, when it's quite difficult and sometimes impossible to have a dialogue with the others. Um, and in a way, most of our systems don't actually invite dialogue and collaboration, but rather competition, debate, um, or honestly just opinion. Actually bridging the, uh, building the bridges that are needed for all of us to get to a better a more sustainable world. And the last characteristic is really getting versed in the sustainability dynamics. At the end of the day, the environmental crisis is a crisis that concerns all of us, whether you're leading a tech startup or a social enterprise or an actual directly climate-oriented solution or are in a public office or are in a large corporate or a small corporate uh, doing any role that you're doing um, as a leader, you need to become aware of how do we build organizations and how do we build livelihoods that are respectful of the 1.5 degrees commitment of the Paris Agreement that uh, include circularity practices rather than just constant consumption. And last but not least, that are aware of the boundaries, the planetary boundaries in which we all need to operate, such as the donut economics or other models that also bring into perspective that we need to change the growth mindset, the infinite growth mindset through extraction that unfortunately has been part of the economic models of the past. With that, we also need to lose some things. And um, what I would say we need to lose first is really um, a shift from competition to collaboration, collaborate, and maybe a shift from monolithic, big, um, hierarchical structures to more collaborative, distributed and network structures, more alliances across stakeholders, and maybe some new innovation at the intersection between our sectors rather than sitting in our silos um, and trying to address basically societal or environmental challenges that are way beyond what an individual sector or a country or an individual leader um, can actually address. We also need to move away from the paradigm of profit as a measure of success. We need to understand how well-being of our communities and of our beneficiaries and our customers is taken into account through our products and also our, the well-being of our employees, the jobs we create in our communities and how the wealth that we generate as organizations is better distributed. Last but not least, in terms of the seeds of the future leadership, I think the seeds are already with us, otherwise this conversation would not happen. And in good news, more and more um, large-scale institutions are also realizing that they need to innovate and shift their own leadership. The young generation is essential in making this happen, and their mindset and hence the education that we provide for the young generation should really be from the future rather than preparing them from a past that will not come back and most likely we don't want to have come back in its full level of dynamics and paradigms. And the last thing is we need to create leaders and to support the seeds of, of that more inclusive and diverse leadership. How do we empower new women in leadership, new minority background leaders um, to really have access to financial and non-financial support to get the same visibility and the same empowering story as some of the more classic leadership and organizational models that we've been promoting. As a final reflection, um, I leave you with a thank you for discussing this um, topic and also with an encouragement that many of us are pioneering and have created models. It's still a learning process and maybe that's the last piece we need to create a more conscious learning process with each other as leaders and as organizations. Um, and I look forward to meet you into that process and learn from you uh, as we all grow and as we all uh, deepen our commitment to build the world that we want to be part of for us and for our many generations after us. Many thanks.
And uh, this was um, the conversation we had with Gabriela that was specially recorded for um, this moment. And um, after looking through all of this content, uh, and after um, also leaving the journey of harvesting all this content. Uh, I want to continue the conversation here with you, Diana, uh, about what are some of the patterns that you are taking out of this experience? The main pattern is that um, leadership is uh, co-designed now and organizations are co-designed now in a shape that we don't know what shape is. The closest metaphor is an ecosystem. And uh, the good news about ecosystems, as I had some conversation with a biologist on ecosystems from nature, are that the, 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 at the intersection of two kinds of, um, of um, like the intersection of, uh, of a field and a forest, that's an, a new ecosystem that has the more innovation in it. This is how nature works. And it looks like we're learning somehow leadership and, um, and, organi and organizational designs from nature, from um, um, architects, from city builders, from designers, from uh, people working in tech. Like we are co-designing together the leadership uh, and organizations of tomorrow. These are my uh, thoughts on end reflection looking at the models and curious about yours on uh, on the conversations and the and the emotion of i i actually loved an expression that you used uh, and i'm gonna quote you on that about how uh, we uh, took some of the dna of the conversation in how we prepared for the session and uh, how a lot of the things were not on time uh, we we had to do a lot of uh, uh, i don't know uh, last minute um, uh, calls uh, somehow there were always resources showing up um, but i had this feeling of um, managing um, a sort of a sort of restlessness like th there is a vibe of um, uncertainty and um, it comes with a very high pulse. Right before uh, I uh, entered now uh, to, to take the heart part of the presentation, uh, actually my watch uh, was showing me that I have a very high heart rate about all the tech, um, working, not working, am I hearing what is happening? Um, and I feel there is a symbol about how we are um, going through this transition because I, I feel like the signs are clear the patterns are very clear um, that we are moving moving towards a more collaborative uh, flatter type of uh, of structures it's a lot about collaboration it's a lot about learning to be together uh, and and get results and efficiency um, out of this new type of togetherness um, at the same time, I see there's a lot of uh, emotions that need to be um, looked at in this. It's not it's not easy, but it sure is worth it. Um, these are my thoughts now. Um, I am looking also at the time that we are approaching our landing. And um, I want to take it over to you now, Diana, for uh, for uh, for taking it to the group uh, as now is the moment when we invite you to, to answer together in the chat to to this question or at least reflect about it because it's very much from the dna of uh, of this uh, new type of working and the question is how can each of us shape the leadership and the organizations of the future and while you think of that, I will invite uh, Bianca to show us what she's harvested from this conversation, not only now, but also yesterday and from the models, if there is anything that she wants to, to show us. And we're really curious about your answers. Um, hi, this is Bianca. I will try to share um, 
in so that you can see the harvest from today. Let's see. Uh, the same thing, you can start screen share while the other participant is sharing. So, so other, other option help. would be that I, I would uh, I would send you really quick, uh, Diana, the, the visual by email and then you can open it. How would that be? I, I think we can get some help from the tech uh, if, if you can stop the sharing of the PowerPoint so that Bianca can share the visual harvesting. Thank you. All right. Um, I see it on the screen. Yes. So we wanted to use also art to tap more into uh, what might elude our uh, conscious mind. And uh, we invite you to take a moment to look at this picture, at uh, this harvesting of ideas um and search within yourselves for what it brings out what are you sensing what are you feeling what do you see And with that, we thank you. As uh, leadership of tomorrow and organizations of tomorrow include also silence and reflection. This is a small reflective space. If you feel like sharing your thoughts with us, you can use the chat for that. And we'll add the Bianca's harvesting to the presentation and we'll upload it in the resource area together with the other resources we've sent and that you can find in the education and work um, a part of the resources on the platform. Can, can I say something, if you can hear me as well? Yes. So I have been silent for too long. This is very difficult for me. Uh, I really enjoyed your conversation and uh, uh, I was uh, happily surprised to see some um, old friends uh, joining us at Future Summit, like Gabriela, who I thank uh, a lot for taking the time. Uh, I, there's something that um, that uh, Bianca actually wrote and draw, and I will reverse it. Uh, and it says something like, uh, I get it, like how we lead is who we are. It was written who we are is how we lead, but I would reverse it and ask you, <laughs> All, all of you, you know, online with us now, um, um, if we take this idea of how we lead is who we are or how we are, uh, uh, we're not all leading. Most people are not leaders or are not in position that they consider themselves leaders or are leaders. So I would actually like to ask you a question about following. So how we follow is what? Is how we co-create. Is this a question, uh, open question, or we can answer? I think it's an open session. question to all three of you, yes. Well, you, you have uh, kind of twisted my arm here because you have already created a paradigm where there's leaders and followers. 
uh, and I, I am I'm going to say pass to that um, because I think actually you that you cannot not be a change maker. You can either realize it or not. Uh, even when you are what one might call a follower, you are still a change maker within that role. And you can still have a very um, strategic approach about how you choose to do that role. And in my opinion, it's just a matter of choice of how you look at yourself, because it's actually who you are is who you are <laughs> in a more simplistic way. Uh, and you are definitely a change maker. How aware are you of that and how are you using that power? It's a matter of choice. Um, I have a, a, a follow-up question to that, um, actually on uh, children, because Elena is here and you, you had that, that conversation on, on uh, young adults and children. Um, uh, for those of us that are watching this now or later uh, in the coming days and weeks, um, there was a question about how do we want um, our, uh, or what's the type of leadership that we want our children to uh, see and, and probably uh, also practice. Um, there's a question for you because you're uh, also uh, in this business of uh, uh, being a parent. Um, how do you look at leadership and what are the, the things that you are showing uh, or, or uh, maybe even projecting uh, to your uh, children, child in this case? In this case, one. Uh, I have an organization of one. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, um, staying true to what I said before, um, I, uh, I have this belief that uh, leadership uh, always starts with how you lead your life. Uh, so it's a matter of owning uh, your choices and your responsibility and the consequences of that. So. Um, what I am doing with uh, my son is that uh, I am treating him as an adult uh, for as much as our conversation can contain because he, he's not even two yet. Uh, so he doesn't have a very big vocabulary. Um, but he, um, like for example, one thing that I did was that uh, he, he was never contained within a space, like for example, that bed where you cannot get out of. He always could roam around. Uh, and um, th this type of autonomy and uh, choice, um, I think is uh, shaping what kind of leader he is going to be. He's going to try out things, explore and draw his own conclusions, hopefully. Um, and um, yeah, that's my, that's my view at the moment. I, I don't have a very high experience. I, as I said before, he's not even two. Diana? I'm a noob. <laughs> Diana, well, speaking of uh, what type of leadership uh, we want our children to uh, practice and uh, learn and get inspired from, uh, what's your take on this? <coughs> I think that kind of leadership is not uh, yet invented or fully shaped because as they grow, they shape the kind of leaders they need to. Um, if our children are uh, less than 10 years, then they are alpha. So we don't know how alpha function and how they operate and what kind of leaders do they need. But I think some seeds are already there from, from these uh, models. Like they need people to, um, to, to listen to them, like really listen more than telling uh, what would the, them what to do which is the same in organizations. Leaders are gonna tell subordinates less and less what to do and more and more listen. Um, they are partners. They want to uh, continue to play. My, my son doesn't want to go to school because he has this thing about school is this institution where my uh, older friends went and they don't like it. <laughs> it's very nice in kindergarten <laughs> where it's more of an ecosystem. <laughs> So I think that they're going to shape leadership as they grow, but they are already showing some of this, uh, these seeds like empathy, curiosity, compassion, more attention to nature, more attention to, to um, all the people in their, uh, in their communities and the people they interact with. Um, I don't know. I'm curious. We'll see in 10, 15 years. Is the, uh, 
I have a, a delicate question for you. Um, we had a lot of conversations today about policy, politics, state. Um, and I was wondering if there is an organizational model that you would like the Romanian state, which consists of government, parliament, local uh, authorities, etc., an organizational model that would be, um, you know, um, better than the current one, maybe. Let's take a 20-year, uh, uh, you know, uh, projection. You can't just uh, flip it in two seconds. I think in the, in the spirit of this conversation of these models, what I can say is that we have a lot of processes, of group, group processes that can be used so that the people that need to shape those organizations to use and reshape these organizations to look more like an ecosystem because an ecosystem looks differently if it's a local government, a central government. I don't know what kind of, I can participate in that. I can, I don't know, recommend processes, but I'm, I'm curious of what that model would look like. More of an ecosystem for sure, but I don't know what shape it has yet. Um, so I think it's more about the, the, the process than the, 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 how it looks at the end, because it's going to look depending on how the process went. Elena? I, I'm, I'm laughing because we actually had a conversation. I was uh, inspired about Generation Green New Deal, um, which if you're not familiar with the movement, it's um, uh, a couple of kids, <laughs> basically, uh, who figured out that there's a... Um, a couple of people having the conversation about uh, economic growth, a couple of people, a different couple of people having the conversation about uh, social equality uh, and um, a different kind of crowd having the conversation about um, ecology and staying green, saving the planet. And that having these conversations at separate tables is uh, not uh, efficient and that they should be uh, all joined in a common conversation. Um, now, I don't have enough knowledge to answer, uh, have a very specific answer to your question. What I do know is that I would love to have a system that brings to the table um, op opposite views um, and is more inclusive uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, designing policies and, um, I don't know, the, the 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 way we live together yeah that's a very good closure to to a large extent about inclusiveness we actually i think you you had a a, a quote to some extent from uh, zahir sidhom uh, from yesterday's um, future summit day and he talked a lot about uh, rebuilding and redesigning cities based on an inclusive approach um, uh, you know let's build cities for the people and for the needs of the people with the people uh, and not just with the people in the present, but also with the people or for the people in the future. Um, and perhaps um, uh, redesigning organizations and redesigning leadership, which I don't think we can do um, because it's a process that, should, that comes usually natural. I mean, it's, it's, there's not a, a commission on, on leadership uh, uh, in New York somewhere and says, we have redesigned yeah. leadership and this is the way it's going to look. Now, in cities, you might have that. Thank you very much to all those, uh, uh, all those 20 something uh, people that, that contributed to this uh, conversation. We will, uh, uh, I, I hope this will take the form of a, uh, or another form, not just a video form. Uh, we'll try to s summarize as much as possible some of these conclusions and make them available to a larger audience uh, uh, from now on. Thanks again to, to all of you watching and to um, Elena, Irina, Diana, Bianca and all the others contributing to this. Now we're heading uh, fast, we're about 20 minutes late uh, to the next session uh, where, we have, where we talk about something completely different, but I'm sure there's a lot of uh, uh, ways in which we, we can uh, uh, draw uh, parallels. Uh, we talk mainly about the future of materials in the following uh, session. And I think materials, uh, when I think about how you know, uh, materials like, like this one, is, et cetera, um, eventually, or a, at some stage, they're very fluid, to some extent, like many organizations of the future um, are as well. We have with us Aike van Vucht, I hope I pronounced the name uh, correctly, 
from VS Particle. Um, IK um, uh, sells equipment that provides its research and industry customers with the tools to manufacture nanoparticles and nanostructured materials. Um, his company is currently